The greatest truth in all the world, the greatest truth in all the world is salvation through the work of Jesus Christ by grace through faith. You believe that? Say amen. amen. You know, the world pushes back. It always has. It always will. They want to come up and say that there's some something else, there's another way. They want to, there's one that's called secular humanism. And they say that uh, secular humanism, it, it basically just says that uh, you're good enough on your own to make it. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to and I say, you know, what are you trusting for for your salvation? And they'll always say, well, preacher, I think I'm good enough. I think I'm all right. Really? You think you're good enough? <clears throat> you're going to make it all the way to heaven? There's some really good people on this earth. There's some really good people who do some really great things. But Ephesians chapter 2 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, yet not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Not of works. That means what we do. <clears throat> lest any man should boast. Not of works. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There is a God. Heaven is His home. And you make it by invitation. We don't make the rules. The Bible tells us in Romans <clears throat> chapter 3, there is none righteous. No, not one. In the 23rd verse of that same chapter, it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They want to talk about, oh, I'm good enough. No, you're not. No, you're not. That brings me my second thing I want to share with you. It's called moral relativism. It has many names that goes by today in the world, but they want to call it changing social values. Basically, they just disagree on what is moral. And they say, well, I, I believe that we ought to be able to judge for ourselves what's moral. They believe to not allow others their own choice of what is moral is judgmental. They'll say, oh, you're being judgmental. Listen, if we set the standards ourselves of what is moral, what is right, what is wrong, we'd still come up short. How many of y'all have decided that this is what I know what I need to do, but you don't do it? Romans 7, that's me. The only standard which would satisfy them is no standard at all, thus no consequences. I'm mortal in my, eye, more in my eyes, so I'm okay. Look, in this world where everybody's judging what's right and wrong, we can't get along. If we were going to go by our own standard, I don't think we'd get along in heaven either, do you? There is a moral God and He gets to choose. Another reason, as I've been looking at the church pretty hard, that the world doesn't understand Christianity is because they don't understand the church. Because we send mixed signals. We say that um, the church is people of the the book, people of the Bible. Yet there are things in our, our church that are more tradition than they are God's Word. And that confuses the world. Well, this is what I've always been taught, or, well, I've been taught, or I've always, or we've always, you know, the one thing they say in a church is, we've never done it that way before. We can't do that. You know what we need to do? Let's just do it the Bible way. Just the simple Bible way truth. I think that's what we need to follow. And living it. But man always wants to put in their thoughts. Some of the most religious people I know put trust in thought about what humans come up with than what the Bible really says. <clears throat> people today argue over are you Calvinist? Do you believe in, in the tulip? Do you believe in election? Do you believe in the sovereignty of God? And to that I say, 
I do believe in the sovereignty of God. He's God, I'm not. There's one God. And there are some terms that he uses to evaluate himself. I believe the Bible action. I have no problem with that. But let God define it. Let God define it. Not let man define it. You see, <clears throat> there's a group that's always going to come around me and they're going, they're going to try to fish out what I think and they'll say, uh, are you Calvinist? Are you Reformed? You know, or, and, and they'll try to put you into that. And I say, I believe I'm a three and a half point Calvinist. I'm not a five point Calvinist. I can't swallow some of the things that they say that they believe. I just can't. Well, then you're Armenian. If you're not Calvinist, you're not Armenian. Armenian means I believe in the free will of God. I do believe in the free will of God. God gives us choice. But I don't believe that our choice can overwrite God. So I'm not Calvinist, and I'm not Armenian. I have one of the smartest men that I've ever met. Uh, I was laying carpet at a church, and he came and helped me um, put the carpet down. And we spent three and a half hours together sweating on our knees. And he kept trying to fence me in on one particular issue or on the other. So you're, you're Calvinist. No, no. Well, you're, then that means you're Armenian. I'm like, no, I'm Christian. This is what I believe. I believe all the Bible. I believe all of it. And I've heard people that are very smart who want to take one kind and they want to, they, they can make it sound so good. And then there's this other kind, and they'll, they'll try to defend that, and, and, and they'll, they'll make it sound so good. You know what I believe? All of it. I, be, I just believe God's Word. And I don't need somebody to twist it and try to make it say something that it really doesn't say. I believe God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe John 3.16. What I'm saying is this. We send mixed signals when we're more trying to convert somebody else to what we believe than what the Bible believes. We're more convinced that we need to get more converts to our way of thinking than what Jesus lived and died for and wants us to follow in. When tradition or man's thinking overrides the will of God in our life, we're the ones that need to change. The world does not understand denominations. They don't, they don't understand institutions. If you haven't figured it out, a lot of them aren't willing to put their trust in the church. They're not willing to put their trust in a preacher. You know what? I'll let you down. I will. Don't put me up there on that pedestal. I'm right fine right where I'm at. Sinner saved by grace. What about you? I'm not perfect. And neither are you. Maybe we just need to preach grace. Maybe we just need to preach faith. A lot of them say, well, I believe in science over faith. For by grace are you saved through? Not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is what I know. God began. In the beginning, God. He, has, he is the pre-eternal God. He has no beginning. <clears throat> no matter how far back you look, God was there. Let's say it this way. There was a blank canvas, and God created the heavens and the earth. God created. <clears throat> but they want to say, well, there was a blank canvas, but something happened. You better believe God happened. We know God created, but they'll say, no, no, we evolved. Instead of saying God created, they say we evolved from nothing. This is what I know. Life begets life. Y'all agree with that? Human beings come from human beings. Trees come from, plants come from, dogs come from. Gorillas make, amen? And there's all kinds of dogs, right? 
but they're still dogs. There is no evolving. There's no evolving. We're teaching, we're sending our children to places of education that are indoctrinating them to say science is true, the Bible's superstition. You know, it takes a whole lot more faith to believe that there was nothing and every came, everything came from nothing than it does to believe life begets life. And the life of God beget life in us. Have you ever seen a half cat, half dog? Have you ever seen a half horse, half goat? You know, we can take a tree and we can graft them together, but guess what? Apple trees make... Y'all good with that? They don't make limes. They make apples. And God watches over the whole thing. Do you know there's not one fact that backs evolution? It takes a whole lot more faith to believe evolution than it does to believe Christianity. Not one fact. There is not one fossil that's ever been found in a halfway state, evolving from one thing to the next. Not one. This past week, they came out in New Mexico. Did y'all see it? They found the new jaw of a dinosaur. You know what they found? A dinosaur. They had to dig it up. It got covered up. Gee, the flood. Y'all ever heard about the flood? No matter where you go in all the world, every culture out there, as far back as they can find, they'll find that there are evidences in every culture about the flood. We couldn't spread that propaganda on our own. People are just writing down what they've experienced in their culture. But you know what they found? They found a dinosaur. It wasn't evolving from something. It was what God created. It didn't make it through the flood. I'm sorry, they couldn't swim. <laughs> Have y'all seen a dinosaur today? I used to date a girl in high school. Her mom kind of looked like a dinosaur, but <laughs> at least she had a mouth that big. I don't know. <laughs> we live in a diverse world. All these different cultures, all these different things that are out there, all these different religions that are out there. And, and the world today says, well, you know, why is it that there's one way? Satan will promote any religion, any religion. He doesn't care. He'll promote any religion over faith in Jesus Christ. And by the way, isn't it funny how we're the ones that's always persecuted? There's idiots out there that they can call anything their God and they, don't, they think we're judgmental if we don't agree with them. They're wrong. I said, well, I'm not going to agree with them. I'll give them the right to think whatever that they want to. There are many religions in the world. Would you all agree with that? But ask the question, is there a God? Every religion out there says there's a God. Some people say, well, I, I don't believe in God. You, you walk down that road if you want to. But some of the greatest, most adamant atheists changed their mind at the end. Charles Darwin, who came up with evolution, right? At the end of his life, they don't tell you this, but at the end of his life, he says, that's a bunch of nonsense. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. Another famous atheist at the end of his life said, when he was dying, he said, oh, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? Oh, what have I done? Isn't it funny? The most offensive statement Jesus made, Mark quoted earlier, it's John 14, 6. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, through me. That's offensive. It's the most offensive statement there is. But guess what? It's truth. Notice that he doesn't say, I am a way. I'm one of many truths. There are many ways to life. No. 
I am the only way. All truth comes and flows through me. I am the life. I was there at the beginning in creation. I've been there all along. I was the one that whispered to you. I was the one that was beating your heart. I was the one when you had questions that was asking you other questions. I was the one that convicted you of your wrongdoings and your immorality that's always let you down. I was there in love. I'll give you life. Oh, there are many other reasons why the world is turning their back on God, but let me tell you the main reason. They just don't want to accept Christ. He might ask them to do something they don't want to do. They believe that they've got a better way, another way. Philippians 2 tells us that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You'll either confess it here or you'll confess it when it's everlastingly too late and you step out into eternity and you find the one that holds eternity in his hand and it's Jesus. But because you didn't trust him by faith, receive his grace by faith, Allow Him to come in and bless your heart and your life because you thought there was a different way or another way. You will spend your eternity separated from Him. If you're willing to make that decision, He is Lord, everything else is taken care of. But if you put anything else in your life as God, as Lord, you have no hope.